Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. We are doing a quick little build series. In my Hobby King Yak 11 review, I had alluded to the fact that I wanted to turn that airplane into a true racer. And so finally, after lots of delays, it's coming to fruition. And the airplane of choice to turn it into is Checkmate. Checkmate was a highly modified Yak 11 with a Pratt & Whitney double row 2800 engine in it. It was an absolute beast. And so in this video, we're gonna cover the full conversion process. Checkmate had the Formula One style canopy as well as a taller tail. We'll show you the conversion process and we'll go from there. So before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Starbond CA Glue. As modelers, CA is a staple in our shops and having a brand that you trust is always essential. You know, we've always had glue that's gone bad on the shelf. Well, Starbond has a shelf life guarantee. So in any case, your CA goes bad, you are guaranteed a replacement. Also, in each two ounce Starbond Pro Pack, you get spare applicator nozzles and pin cap micro tips to get in those hard to reach areas. And you get a full instruction manual as well that also has a QR code that leads to Starbond's guided instructions. I have a link down in the description. And if you use coupon code geek 10, you'll get 10% off your order. It really is good stuff. All right, so let's go. First, we need a soft surface to work on. Some foam safe glue, some Depron, more Depron, and of course, the airplane. Let's do this. When starting a project like this, I like to start with the small areas first. So start it out by first locating and cutting the tip of the vertical tail. An X-Acto knife was used to score the cut line first and then a long knife was used to cut it all the way through. Once cut, two halves of the new tail tip were blocked out of six millimeter Depron sheet, in addition to the small section required to square off the back of the rudder. The inside trailing edges of the tip blocks were beveled, and then a light plywood spar was glued in place with foam safe CA. To glue the two halves together, the trailing edge was CA'd first, and then the rest was glued and curved around the main spar. To receive the spar, a slot was dremeled into the top of the tail, and then the completed plan form assembly was epoxied in place and held in place with tape to cure. The rudder trailing edge extension was CA'd next. Once it was all cured, the tail tip was sanded to shape, starting by blocking out the leading and trailing edges to match the airframe, followed by sanding the contour. The Depron sands beautifully, but do be careful not to over sand, and also having a selection of different sized sanding blocks is always helpful. Once sanded, Sherwin-Williams shrink-free spackle was added as a filler to get a good blend on the surface and also fix any areas I may have accidentally over sanded. Once that was dry, it was all sanded smooth and the process repeated as needed to get the final finished surface. From there, it was on to the main fuselage and canopy. After first removing the canopy, it was necessary to remove material from the main hatch to allow for the thickness of the six millimeter Depron cover that would be glued to it. This was accomplished with the long knife again after marking some guidelines with a Sharpie around the edges. With that done, a cover was cut out of Depron sheet and glued to the hatch using foam safe CA and Gorilla Glue. Time was taken to work the Depron around the contours as the cover was glued on, which would help save time in the sanding process. While that assembly was allowed to cure, the rear deck cover was made and glued into place in very much the same manner. 
Again, it was necessary to clear enough material to allow for the thickness of the 6mm Depron. This is to provide a recess in the surface that will allow a nice smooth transition to the fuselage, which again saves time in sanding. The Depron cover was glued in place with Gorilla Glue and then set aside to allow sufficient time to cure before the next step. Next, it was necessary to fit the hatch to the fuselage by first sanding the edges flush as needed with the new pieces in place, and then sanding the whole area to match the fuselage contour. The goal was to have a nice straight line along the fuselage as per the full size. To provide extra rigidity for handling, balsa wood edges were glued along the length of the hatch and then first planed and then sanded to match the fuselage contours. And then of course, to finish it all out, filler was added to aid in blending all of the shapes together and fix any problem areas that may have come up. And once again, it was all sanded smooth to blend it all together. At this point, Sherwin-Williams shrink-free spackle was applied to the entire airframe, which serves to fill in and smooth out all of the otherwise oversized panel lines. This helps create more realism to the final finished airframe. Once the filler was dry, the airframe was sanded smooth, and as you guessed, yes, there's quite a bit of sanding involved with this. The last necessity in finishing up the conversion is to make the canopy and turtle deck. A 13-inch canopy from SIG Manufacturing was first cut to the desired length and height and checked against the airframe. The edges were first scored with a scalpel and then cut as needed with scissors. If you do it right, you should be able to peel the pieces away from each other. From there, the ridge line of the turtle deck contour was cut out of Depron and checked against the fuselage. The canopy was used to trace out two bulkheads, one for the canopy and the other for the turtle deck with a six millimeter allowance all around. The turtle deck bulkhead was glued to the ridgeline part and then glued with foam safe CA to the fuselage ensuring that it was straight and square along the backbone. To create the half round cross section, long small strips of 6mm Depron were cut and glued in place along the backbone. This is a similar method to strip planking with balsa wood. In the process, it helps to have tapered pieces as well as bevels along the edges, depending on what's required to get all of the strips to fit together. The more time spent getting it all to fit together well, the less time required in sanding it and getting it to the final shape. It takes time, of course, but the final result is always worth it. With the planking finished on both sides, 
It was then time to sand it and get it to the final shape. And then of course, once that was all done, it was time to apply more filler. The filler was again sanded and the final shape was completed on the backbone area, which includes a nice fairing at the base of the vertical tail. It was now time to start getting the model ready for the paint process. This was started by first sanding the entire airframe with 180 grit sandpaper to ensure everything was as smooth and clean as desired. From there, Minwax Polycrylic water-based polyurethane was applied over the entire airframe. This serves to seal the whole airframe and fill in any porosity in the filler while also hardens the surface and stiffens the airframe once it's fully cured. This is especially important on the Depron areas since the Depron is prone to reacting to solvents unlike the EPO foam airframe itself. I found applying the polycrylic with a foam brush works best, but do be careful to avoid getting drips in the surface because they do not sand well. A total of about four coats of polycrylic were applied, and then the surface was lightly sanded again with 180 grit sandpaper in preparation for spraying primer onto it. The primer of choice is Duplicolor Filler Primer as it sprays and sands very well. And so following each application of primer, the airframe was sanded down with 180 grit sandpaper. This process is what smooths out the airframe, getting rid of the foam texture because as each coat is sanded, the microvoids within the foam texture are filled with the primer. This process was repeated about five to six times until the desired smoothness was obtained. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut here. To get the airframe smooth, you just have to put in the work to get the results. The last step in the preparation process was after the final primer coat to wet sand the entire airframe with 600 grit sandpaper. It is important to use wet and dry sandpaper here as a normal dry sandpaper won't work well once water is applied. It's mostly a light sanding that's performed since all of the hard work has already been done. We're just preparing the surface to receive paint. And so, here is the fully converted airframe ready for paint. It's really quite amazing how different the model looks, and it will be fun to see once it's all finished up, which we'll cover in the next video. All right, so we now have the airplane fully in primer. The conversion process is done. I intend to cover the whole fuselage with flight metal, which is a really thin aluminum tape. That's going to have some unique challenges because of the foam airframe underneath, but otherwise, you know, the tail area and the wing will be painted just as they were on a full scale airplane. In the meantime, check out the refinish series I did on the Freewing F-14 Tomcat. It was really a lot of fun to do. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.